at Cocktail Conversations, candid insights from startup founders, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders from around the globe. Waze is a community of 40 million people that hate traffic. Uh, our app allows people to report in real time, both passively and actively, what's going on around them in traffic. Um, and the, the, our maps rewrite themselves in real time to allow people to avoid uh, any incidents that are on the road ahead of them um, and show them the fastest way to get from point A to point B based on today's conditions, not just what, what's normally the, the right way to do it. So based on traffic jams, based on police, uh, based on road closures, we update everything in real time to allow people to get from point A to point B uh, as fast as possible. Our, our founder and CEO, uh, the company is based in Tel Aviv, and our founder and CEO received an, a, a more traditional uh, navigation device, realized that it was a dead document, that until he upgraded it once, once a year with the new maps, uh, there was nothing real or vibrant about it. And so as a result, kind of said, hey, you know, I can hack this, hacked it to his phone, and uh, started adding in traffic stops, started adding in speed cameras, and uh, from there, got a cease and desist letter. Uh, was told, please don't do that to our, our navigation device. And said, fine, I'll build it myself. And that, that, that was where that started uh, about four or five years ago. And we just crossed over 40 million users uh, last week. So one of the things here in the US, um, as far as growing our user base that's been really successful, is we, we now power 26 local TV stations traffic reports. Um, so every morning, every evening, their traffic uh, reports are actually powered by Waze. So they're, they're creating a two-way conversation between people in traffic as well as people uh, at the studio. And so that allows, um, basically, instead of calling into your local uh, radio station saying, hey, there's, a, there's an accident on 45 um, at the, the interchange, we can actually report that. Everyone's maps are updated in real time, um, and they're able to report that uh, on the news. So that, that's been a really successful program for us. So one of the things that we, we think a lot about in creating buzz at South By or really anywhere is, is how do we deliver more value to the user? Um, you know, with Waze, you know, admittedly, we're 40 million users, but we have yet to really build all of the feature sets that make it easy for people to share that experience with everyone else. It is word of mouth. It's people saying, you know, I was using Waze and you wouldn't believe it. They saved me eight minutes today on my commute or they navigated me around a large, uh, large traffic incident. And same thing with Gowalla, we, we were allowing people to report and share stories about the places where they were and the things that they were, they were seeing um, and invite people to be a part of that experience. Um, and so in, in doing that, it's a lot about what is the user's story that they're going to tell once they have had that interaction. There, there's a time and a place, I guess, for hype, um, but hype that's not backed up by an amazing product is just hype. Know why you hustle. Um, you know, when there's a lot of people that talk about how you know, hey, you have to work hard, you have to do this, you have to do that, and and as a result, we're ending up with a lot of really stressed out people. Um, but they're not really sure why they're stressed out. They've just been told that that's what it means to be in a startup. And if you understand the why behind what you're up to, um, you understand how you're creating a better thing for your users as well as for your investors, your stakeholders, um, then it makes it a lot easier to 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 work an 80-hour week so you don't have to work a 40-hour week. Um, and that's, you know, that's what entrepreneurship is, is all about, is saying, I, I'm going to work crazy hours, but they're my hours as opposed to 40 hours for somebody else. So I wouldn't say it's the worst job I've ever worked, but the most challenging job I ever had was selling life insurance. Uh, my first job out of college was selling life insurance. I was 22 years old. I was going in and meeting with executives um, and talking to them about what happens if they died. And that's an interesting conversation to have. But if you can sell life insurance, you can sell anything. And it's, it's, I learned a lot about the process, and it's something that has been, fortunately, I've been able to carry it with me um, from that early learning experience to now working, you know, from there I went to sell private jets, which was pretty fun, to then selling a company to Facebook, and now, now we're on to, to working with uh, social GPS and navigation.